Hey guys, welcome. Um, this presentation is on plate boundaries and it addresses our Earth and Environmental Standard 2.2.1 um, where you need to be able to explain how the rock cycle, plate tectonics, volcanoes, and earthquakes impact the lithosphere. Um, so this is just a small part of that standard. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. All right, so what are plates? Um, so Earth's upper crust, the rigid upper mantle, is broken into these enormous plates. And the Earth has, um, has 14 major tectonic plates. Um, and these plates move in different directions at different rates and speeds, and they interact at um, places that are called plate boundaries. So here's a lovely image um, of the plates as we know um, of it right now. So let's look at our plate boundaries. So first we have a divergent boundary. So a divergent boundary is moving apart. A convergent boundary is moving together. And a transform fault boundary is moving do, 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 sideways past each other. So this should be something you um, probably remember from middle school. Um, but we're going to go a little more in depth into the, these types of boundaries and what they do. So let's look at divergent boundaries. All right, so divergent boundaries are where two tectonic plates are moving apart. Um, and some um, divergent boundaries um, form on continents. Um, for example, the um, East Africa Rift Valley, when it's within a continent, it's called a Rift Valley. And so there is one in East Africa, um, and it is moving apart. However, most divergent boundaries are on the seafloor at ocean ridges, and this results in what's called seafloor spreading. And this um, causes an ocean basin to grow. So let's look at this, this, um, this rift value, valley, the divergent boundary. Um, the divergent boundary of two continental plates creates a rift valley. And an example is the East African Rift Valley. All right, so how do we know that these rift valleys um, exist, and that has to do with magnetism. So rocks containing iron minerals um, provide a record of the Earth's magnetic field, which is changing. Um, the study of this um, magnetic record is called paleomagnetism, right, and basalt um, is what provides an accurate record of ancient magnetism. So as basaltic lava cools, all right, the minerals become oriented parallel to the Earth's magnetic field, our compass like compass needles, okay? So the, the compass needle that's within the rock turns in the direction um, of the magnetic field on Earth. And right now we know that the magnetic field is oriented towards the North Pole, but that has not always been true, all right? Um, it, it switches every couple thousand years, all right? Um, but once that lava basalt hardens, all right, that magnetic orientation can no longer move, all right? And so that provides us a lovely record of the age of things by being able to look at how the magnetism earth of the Earth has changed over time. And we can tell that it has been changing, but also that the size of the floor of the ocean or the Rift Valley is growing. So this is called the geomagnetic time set scale, our studies of basalt shows magnetic reversals, all right, and so we said um, magnetic reversal is a change in the Earth's magnetic fields, and um, today's orientation we call normal polarity, um, and then if it's not like it is today, it's called reverse polarity, all right. We also have stronger than normal magnetic fields, which is a normal field, and weaker than usual readings or reverse polarity, so we can look at all these things on the ocean floor or in a rift valley. So we use what's called a magnetometer to detect small changes in magnetic fields. Um, these are constantly being used around the world. Um, they're usually um, towed by ships, um, and um, as the ships go across the ocean, um, they can record the magnetic field strength in the rock on the ocean floor. Um, positive and negative areas um, forms a series of stripes in the image um, that is parallel to the ocean ridges. Um, and then there's a, a mirror image 
um, across the ridge. So th what you will see on one side of the ridge, you will see in a mirror image form on the other side of the ridge. All right, um, and that's because it spreads onto both sides of the, the ocean floor. And this is used to construct, construct magnetic maps of our seafloor, which is really important for us to learn about our plate, the plate movement. Um, until the mid-1900s, everybody thought the ocean floor was flat um, and that the, the crust, the oceanic crust, was unchanged, um, but also older than the continental crust. However, in the 40s and 50s, with help from technology that was um, developed during World War II, um, we were able to prove those ideas wrong. Um, we've learned about how we, we are constantly learning new things and they're proving what we used to believe as wrong. So what was that technology? That technology was sonar, all right? And it uses sound waves to measure the water depth. Um, and sound waves are sent um, from a ship in the ocean. Um, they go and hit the floor and they bounce back. And by measuring the time it takes, we can calculate the distance um, from the ship to the ocean floor. So from technology, um, scientists discovered there's vast underwater mountain chains. Um, as shown in the image, um, and these are ocean ridges, just like um, ridges on our Earth. And there are earthquakes and vo volcanoes um, very commonly among these ridges. Um, they also discovered deep sea trenches. Right? These are narrow, elongated depressions in the seafloor um, with very steep sides. Um, and for example, the deepest is the Mar Mariana Trench. It's over 11 kilometers deep, um, so about six to seven miles um, deep. Um, and um, these trenches um, are amazing places. They're, they have, um, you know, bacterial life that we can't, don't see anywhere else in the world. They're awesome places. You see um, animals that live there that can't live anywhere else. So um, this is some amazing discoveries. So seafloor spreading. All right, so seafloor spreading states um, the new ocean crust is formed at ocean ridges and destroyed at deep sea trenches. So at the ocean ridge, all right, magna is forced up through the crust along the ridge. It hardens as it hits the ocean floor because of the water, and then it spreads as more magna is moved upward. All right, the cycle of spreading and intrusion results in fall formation of small sections of the floor which slowly move away from that ridge. All right, so how do we prove seafloor spreadings? All right, one, um, we can tell that the rocks closest to the ridges are youngest and the rocks closest to the shorelines or the trenches are the oldest. So here's a little image that shows how um, this lovely um, thing at the bottom shows you how it um, forms. All right, um, and we can look at where are the rocks from three to four billion years ago. Um, we also noticed that the thickness of the ocean floor sediment is much less than continental se sediment. What that means is that um, the ocean floor um, thickness is less thick than the, on continents or land, so-called land. All right, and as you get further away from the ridges, the, um, the thickness increases. All right, so we've talked a lot about divergent boundary. Let's talk about some convergent boundaries. Convergent boundaries are where two tectonic plates are moving towards each other. And we have three types, oceanic, oceanic, oceanic continental, and continental, continental. So an oce oceanic, oceanic, um, subduction, um, results in subduction. So that means that one of the two plants will descend beneath the other. Um, and that's because one plate is less dense um, than the other. And so um, it goes under the other. And this creates a deep sea trench. That plate that it then subducts goes under and then it melts and becomes part of um, part of the Athenosphere, all right, um, and melts, all right, and this recycles the oceanic crust. Now, however, some of the magna um, that forms from the one plate that goes under is going to um, be forced back up. It erupts, and it forms a chain of volcanoes, all right, and those chain of volcanoes, as a result, start forming islands and um, trenches, and and those 
islands are called island arcs. So we have the Mariana Trench and the Mariana Islands and the Aleutian Trench and the Aleutian Islands um, that you can look at that are examples of this. Um, this image shows you um, one of the um, plates descending below the other plate. It starts to melt, but in the process of melting, some of it is forced up to create islands and volcanoes um, while the rest goes and re um, it is a recycling process. All right, so let's talk about convergent boundaries. Um, a convergent boundary of two oceanic plates creates a blank and a blank. What are those two things? So they create a, an island arc and a trench. And an example is Japan. Japan is an example. Um, those are volcanic islands as a result of a trench of um, com two oceanic boundaries coming together. All right, oceanic, oceanic continental. All right, um, subduction also occurs. The oceanic plate will subduct. Okay, that's because it is less, um, uh, the denser oceanic plate conduct, um, is subducted. All right, um, this also produces a trench and volcanic arc, um, but um, but the volcanoes um, occur under the continental crust. Um, so, um, and sometimes it's not volcanoes, sometimes it is just mountains, a mountain range, but sometimes a volcano. So an example here would be the west coast of the United States and Alaska. So we know that there's um, a bunch of mountains um, on the west, near the west coast, and we also have volcanoes, such as up near Seattle. All right, Mount St. Helens. Um, and that is an example of an oceanic continental convergent boundary. All right, so a convergent boundary of an oceanic plate and a continental plate forms a volcanic mountain range and a trench. An example is the Cascades, the Cascades Mountains, or the Andes Mountains in South America are another example of where the Juan de, um, Juan de Fuca plate is um, converging um, with a continental crust. All right, continental, continental convergent boundaries. Um, this forms when two continental plates collide. Um, and neither plate really subducts, all right? Um, the colliding edges are uplifted to form a mountain range. So this order, one does subduct a little bit, but not much. And an example of this is the Himalayas. Um, and that's why Mount Everest is still rising. So two continental crusts, the one that makes up um, China and the the Indian plate are coming together and forcing up um, mountains in the Himalayas. So convergent boundaries of two continental plains forms a folded mountain range. An example are the Himalayas, the Alps, and the Appalachian Mountains, just slightly west of us. All right, transform boundaries. Um, this is where two plates slide horizontally past each other. Um, the crust here is only deformed or fractured. Um, and this is characterized by long faults and shallow earthquakes. And this, an example of this is the San Andreas Fault. And this is movement along a fault are responsible for most of, most of the earthquakes in California. So transform boundaries where... Uh, it transform fault boundaries where the North American and Pacific plates are moving past each other. An example is the San Andreas Fault in California. All right, so let's go ahead and review. I want you to take a minute and pause this video and see if you can answer these questions. All right, so take a minute. All right, let's go ahead and see what these answers are. Places where plates move apart are called divergent boundaries. When continental plates diverge, a rift valley is formed. When two oceanic plates converge, what is created? An island arc and a trench. Appalachians form mainly from continental plate collisions and therefore are a 
folded mountain range. And force moving the plates is convection currents. And we'll talk more about that in our next um, video. Um, so um, look forward to talking to you more about um, plate tectonics.